at this point. But I would just say that, you know, these other countries are up to the challenge and proven that they've been up up to the challenge. And so it's going to be interesting to see. I will agree with you on that. I, I do think the other countries have proven that they can play uh, with the league. Now, going back to when the USA took the that bronze medal, we didn't send our best. You remember, that was a season <laughs> and a span where guys just didn't want to play. The best guys wanna didn't want to go. No out there and i think when america sends i still think american basketball is still the greatest basketball you know in the world right now but with that being said man uh it's, it's going to be interesting to see i agree with both of you guys i think uh it remains to be seen but also hey, too i think it kind of just, just my perspective on it, it hurts the game a little bit in the sense of uh here in america you got little boys and little girls with the dream of playing in the nba and now they they may never get that opportunity because as the game continues to expand globally, there's only so many spots already. There's only so many rounds in the NBA draft. And now if, you know, there's 30 other countries participating in that, yeah. it really slices the pie down really small. Hey, you, you know what else, guys? I also think because a lot of people forget that the NBA has implemented a grassroots, um, I wouldn't say a campaign, but, you know, they have the NBA Without Borders organization, that, you know, overseas to where they're actually targeting these high school and, and, and college players to where they are playing in the NBA Borders uh, organization. And they are able, the coaches, the USA coaches in college, they're able to see these players and pick and pluck some of those guys and girls and bring them over to their universities. So we got to understand that the NBA, you know, NBA without borders, that organization is vital to those young athletes over there. That's looking to, you know, expand their game and come to us and the college and hopefully get to the WNBA or the NBA. Mm -hmm. But is that, is that fair? Now, again, I'm not against what the NBA is doing, but I'm saying, is that fair that these guys get NBA without borders? They get an opportunity to grow, participate, learn the American game on a professional level, whereas here in America, kids got to go through high school. They got to go through college. They got to figure it out. By the time they get to the pros, they evaluate it on, uh, you know, not just their game, but they evaluated on their personalities. They evaluated on, you know, their families. They about like here, it seems like the the road has become tougher, but lesser <laughs> to get in, as opposed to overseas. Now they're they're they get to grow up in an NBA uh, kind of environment in a sense. What what's your take on that? Is that is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's just really, um, I think in, in some ways other countries are starting to play catch up to where America's at. Like America has already had a foundation built over the last 75 years, at least when it comes to the NBA, because the NBA has been around for 75 plus years. Uh, so there's more of a foundation built um, and a pathway built uh, for players to be able to enter the league. Now, um, you know, it used to be where players in America would go straight from high school to the pros. And we all know who those guys were. And then it was high school, college, yeah. then the pros. I mean, that was the traditional route until, you know, guys like Moses Malone, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, LeBron James, and others decided to break that mold, go straight from high school to the pros. Um, but like you said, well, uh, there was that emphasis on not just who they are as players, but their personalities, their backgrounds, family dynamics, and so forth. Um, and I think that's what's happening overseas as well. It's not necessarily that, you know, they're trying to make things easier for the, the guys overseas. It's just that they're trying to take what was done in America successfully and bring that to other parts of the world and not just Europe. I mean, you can look at uh, the NBA, NBA Africa, where they're starting to grow the game in Africa. Um, yeah. And so, um, you know, I think I think what it is is just taking what we've already done here in America and applying it to other countries and just seeing how it works. Love it. Well, listen, I want to leave that there, man. And just to say this, to put this out there, I think the growth of the game is great. I'm glad that it is growing because it, 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 it makes you have to work that much harder 
to to maintain and get. And I think we're going to see where all this balance itself out during these Olympics. We're going to see how great USA basketball is compared to the world. So from there, I think I think the NBA may really be watching it closely to see who has true dominance. But I want to move on, man. You know, we just went through the NBA draft and we got we just got to talk about this for a little bit, man. 